What are you doing? I'm rotating my cuff to get it stronger for today's video. Hi everyone and welcome to Exercise for Health. I'm Richard and today I'm going to give you some exercises to help strengthen the rotator cuff muscle group for improving the stability of your shoulder. If you're new to this channel, we offer tips, advice and exercises each week to help you manage your health condition with physical activity. So go ahead and tap the subscribe button below and the bell icon if you want to be notified of when we upload a new video. The rotator cuff is a group of four muscles that provide stability to the shoulder joint where the humerus or upper arm bone meets with the scapula or shoulder blade. They are the supraspinatus, infraspinatus, teres minor and subscapularis. Occasionally through overuse of positions with high demand of these muscles, poor posture or exercise technique or from an injury, these muscles can tear causing weakness, instability and pain around the shoulder. The most common muscle to be injured is the supraspinatus because it is the most susceptible to impingement in the space between the acromion and the head of the humerus. As with any other muscle group, for them to function properly, the rotator cuff requires strength, flexibility and stability. However, it's also important that exercises for the other muscles around the shoulder are also performed to maintain a biomechanical balance. These can be exercises for the pectorals, latissimus dorsi, deltoids, rhomboids, trapezius, biceps, triceps and serratus anterior muscles. I'm going to take you through 10 of my preferred rotator cuff exercises that raise the degree of intensity as we progress through the video. For some of the intermediate and advanced exercises, you will need the use of a resistance band or therapy band. We're not gonna be performing any exercises that internally rotate the shoulder, as we don't want to add to poor posture, so we will predominantly focus on external rotation of the shoulder joint. Anyone that is experiencing an impingement or has a diagnosed greater tear of the rotator cuff should get specialised advice from a physiotherapist to ensure the exercises they choose are appropriate for them. Some of these I show you may be suitable for you and you could actually offset the need for surgery, but others may not be suitable and there are hundreds of different exercises that can be performed for the rotator cuff. What is most important is that you don't perform any exercise that causes pain. Got that? Okay, let's go through them. The first exercise is the pendulum. This is a great exercise to help with relief from any pain as it allows a relaxation of the muscles in the shoulder in an attempt to create a bit more space in the joint. To do this exercise, you just need something to support your upper body weight using your hand to rest on. So I'm using the back of a chair and just let the arm and shoulder hang loose. You then start to move the body around, keeping the arm relaxed, and it will begin to gently swing around. Perform this movement for about 30 to 60 seconds to release any tension, and you can do this two or three times. If you prefer, you can also perform this with a very light weight held in your hand. The second is the arm reach. This exercise will help stretch those muscles around the shoulder to improve your flexibility. Here you will just need a wall to rest your lower arm against while supporting your body weight with the other hand. Before starting, ensure your shoulder blade is set down and back and maintain this throughout the stretch. With the little finger edge of your hand on the wall, so the extended thumb is pointing towards you, begin to slide the arm up the wall ensuring you don't shrug your shoulder. When you feel some light resistance to the movement in the shoulder, hold it still for about 30 to 60 seconds. If within this time frame the tension releases, you can move the arm a little higher up the wall developing the stretch and you can repeat this two or three times. You can also use a foam roller if you have one to rest your arm on to make it smoother moving in and out of the stretch. Just be careful not to arch your lower back as you reach your end range of movement. The third exercise is an outward isometric contraction. This exercise will begin to activate the external rotators, which are three of the four muscles of the rotator cuff, but without moving. It's best to do this exercise seated, but essentially start in good posture with your shoulders set down and back. Tuck a small rolled up towel underneath your arm and bring your elbow into the side of your waist with the elbow bent at 90 degrees and the thumb pointing upwards in front of you. 
Place your other hand on the outside of your wrist as this support hand will be used to stop any movement. You then gently apply pressure, pushing your wrist outwards into the support hand, causing an isometric contraction. Hold the contraction for about five seconds, release, and then start again. Repeat this on off contraction for 30 to 60 seconds. And as before, you can repeat it two or three times. Make sure you only apply enough pressure to activate the muscles and certainly don't aggressively contract the muscles suddenly. Build up the pressure gradually in the first two seconds of every five second contraction. Moving on to the intermediate exercises, we'll start with the wall angels. This exercise is great to improve shoulder mobility and can also be used as a warm up to an upper body workout. Stand with your back to the wall with your feet about six inches away from the wall. Make sure your head, upper back, tailbone of your spine, elbows and back of hands are touching the wall, starting with your hands about your head height. As before, set your shoulders down and back and the aim is to slowly move the arms straight up the wall, maintaining those five points of contact and then return back to the start position. If you do this slowly about 10 to 15 times, you'll really feel this working in the shoulders. Be careful not to arch the lumbar spine as you reach your end range. And if you can't get your arms straight, maintaining the five points of contact, just go as far as you're able to based on your mobility. This will improve the more you do it. The next exercise is the wall crawl. This exercise stimulates the external rotators of the shoulders isometrically, but at the same time adds in some movement of the shoulder joint to improve its stability. You will need a small closed loop band, ideally for this, wrapped around your forearms. Face on the wall like you did with the arm reach. Place both forearms on the wall with your elbows in line with your shoulders and your thumbs pointing towards you. You then start crawling your arms up the wall for about four short stepping movements and then crawl them back down. Up and down counts as one repetition and you should aim to do this 10 to 15 times. Make sure that your forearms remain vertical throughout the movement so that your elbows and hands are always a shoulder width. Also be careful not to round off your back. So as with most of the other exercises in this video, keep your shoulders set down and back. The sixth exercise is resisted external rotation. This is where you dynamically rotate the shoulder joint outwards, working the muscles against a resistance to start to build a stronger foundation for your shoulder. And this is the typical exercise most people will think of as a rehab exercise for your rotator cuff. You will need your resistance band or therapy band for this one. Roll up a small towel and place it underneath your upper arm. Squeeze your elbow into your side, pinning the towel, and have the band across the body fixed at an anchor point, ideally the same height as your elbow. Move away from the anchor point until the resistance band has a small amount of tension. Set your shoulder blades down and back and you're ready for the movement. Without twisting the spine, pull the band outwards, maintaining a 90 degree bend in the elbow at all times, keeping the band parallel to the ground. Move the hand outwards to your range of movement, but not excessively far. But if you can't get the hand directly in front of you, then you may need to choose a lighter resistance. Slowly return the forearm back across the body and repeat for 10 to 15 repetitions. You can use a cable machine in the gym for this one, but only use a really light weight as the muscles will fatigue quite quickly. If you want to use hand weights for this exercise, then don't do it standing as the weight will have no direct impact on the rotator cuff muscles and it'll only work the biceps. Instead, as the weight always acts down with gravity, you will need to lie on your side and perform the exercise with the light weight in your hand, following all the same coaching points already mentioned. Common mistakes with this exercise include over rotation of the spine to assist with the movement. So make sure your core stays engaged to prevent this. Some will draw their elbow away from their side, more so when they begin to fatigue. So other muscles such as the deltoid activate. So make sure you keep the towel pinned into your side. And the other common mistake is where people overextend by straightening the arm at the end of their range. Again, activating a different muscle, in this case the triceps, when they begin to fatigue. My best advice for this exercise, as it's one I see performed incorrectly in the gyms all the time, is to lift light. Nothing too strenuous, so you're able to perform 10 to 15 repetitions and you can progress by doing this two or three times. You can also use this exercise regularly once or twice a week to keep the rotator cuff strong and stable, particularly if you're a lifter of heavy weights. 
The next exercise is the Hitchhiker, which progresses the last exercise by incorporating a shoulder extension movement with the external rotation. I've given it this name as it looks like a hitchhiker on the side of a road asking for a lift. Do this exercise seated and ideally with a therapy band. Anchor your band around the top of your shins just below your knees and make sure that the band is taut before starting the movement. Make sure you're in a good posture before you start, sat up tall and again with the shoulders set down and back. Begin to stretch the band by pulling one straight arm backwards towards your hip whilst at the same time rotating the shoulder outwards. Using the extended thumb as a guide, you'll see it move from a forward pointing position when at the start to a backward pointing position at the end. This ensures that the rotator cuff is working as well as the other muscles in and around the shoulder. Aim to do 10 to 15 repetitions and make sure they're performed slowly so you are controlling the tension of the band throughout. Moving on to the last three advanced exercises, we'll begin with the full can raise. This exercise is done standing and can be performed with both arms at the same time or it can be done separately. Start by standing on the middle of a therapy band and set your shoulder down and back. Aim to lift your arms up, keeping them straight, similar to a front raise, an exercise for the deltoid or shoulder muscles, but in this variation your arms are taken outwards by about 30 degrees. The variation increases the activation of the rotator cuff muscle while decreasing the activation of the deltoid. It's important that the thumbs always point upwards throughout the movement, like you are keeping hold of the contents in a can and not emptying it by pointing the thumbs down. This will also help avoid any impingement in the shoulder. Make sure the arms only go up as high as your shoulder height and take care not to shrug the shoulders during the lift. Perform 10 to 15 repetitions and you can also do this exercise with some light hand weights if you don't have a therapy band. My penultimate exercise is the sword draw. This is a very functional exercise as it not only externally rotates the shoulder under resistance but it also horizontally abducts the shoulder activating a lot of the muscles around the shoulder joint. To do this one you need your resistance band anchored lower closer to the ground opposite to the side that you're working. Have the arm across your body, holding the handle or end of the band close to your opposite hip. Don't stand completely sideways on for this, but turn slightly towards the anchor point, which will stop the band pressing up against the body and taking the tension away from the muscles. Start with your shoulders down and back and engage your core muscles to restrict any spinal movement. Then keeping your arms straight, raise the arm up and outwards until it's at shoulder height out to the side of your body. Think of a sword being drawn out of its scabbard. Using your thumb again as a guide, it will point towards your hip at the start and then upwards and outwards at the end of the movement, allowing for external rotation. Make sure your torso remains still throughout the exercise and you can do 10 to 15 repetitions to complete your set. You can make the exercise harder by moving further away from the anchor point, stretching the band more and increasing the resistance before you start the movement. You can also use a cable machine for this exercise in a gym if you have the right type of attachment. The final exercise is the row, rotate, press. This is a very hard exercise to perform correctly as there is so much going on through the exercise. You can do this in a standing, half kneeling or even a seated position and you really don't need much resistance for this to be challenging. Before starting, the anchor point for the band should be close to the same height as your shoulder. Facing the anchor point, move yourself backwards with your arms straight and palm facing down until you reach a point of slight tension in the band. If you're standing, choose a foot position that helps support you, probably staggered. I'm choosing a half kneeling position with the knee of the side I'm working on on the ground to limit any hip or spine movement. Set your shoulder down and back and really engage your core before you begin. The first part to this movement is the row. So this is drawing the elbow back, keeping it level with the height of the shoulder, keeping the shoulder blades retracted. At the end point of this movement, you then externally rotate the shoulder, keeping the elbow in the same position. Once this movement is complete, you then press your arms straight up above your head, which will progressively feel harder as the lever lengthens. You then reverse these three movements to slowly return to your start position. 
This is a complex exercise to perform and it's very easy to arch your lower back, particularly during the press phase, so make sure your core muscles remain engaged so only the arm moves. Also be careful not to drop the elbow on the row or rotate phase or shrug the shoulder on the press phase and work with your range of pain-free movement. This is another exercise where you can use the cable machine in the gym and as with the other mid and high level exercises, aim to perform 10 to 15 slow repetitions and you can always do multiple sets as you progress. Remember to only pick the exercises that suit your current level and don't cause you pain. I hope you can take something away from this video today. If so, please give it a like by clicking the thumbs up button below and share this video with friends to help this channel grow so more people can benefit from it. Thank you so much for watching and remember to stay active, keep moving and I'll see you next week. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video today, please give it a thumbs up. You can also click here to subscribe to this channel or click here to watch a recent video. See you soon.